layout for the boiler plant is like this. We have a air preheater, we have a economizer, we have a super heater and we have a boiler. The air is uh, in boiler, we are giving the three input, one is water, one is air and one is coal. Air is coming from this side and if the air will come collect from atmosphere, it is slightly heated in the air feeder, air preheater. From this side, the flue gases from chimney are passing. So because of this one, the temperature of air is slightly raised and that hot air is supplied to the boiler. If the air is hot, naturally less heat is required to raise the temperature of air. So naturally our heating is more effective. From this side, we have a normal water that is from pump, pressurized water. Pressurized water is supplied through the economizer. From this side, the flue gases are passing. The flue gases at high temperature so indirect heat is transferred to this one because of this one the temperature of water will increase so some heat recovery tech so if the water temperature to the inlet to the boiler will increase naturally the latent heat of vaporization will also decrease and thereby certain amount of heat is recovered in the economizer and in the boiler we assume that the steam form is dry and saturated and if we want a super heated then we are using a super heater so we have Boiler, super heater, economizer and air preheater. In air preheater, we are raising the temperature of air by means of flue gases. In the economizer, we are raising the temperature of water which is fed to the boiler. And in the super heater, we are converting the steam back to what? Super heat steam and is given to turbine. So we have a three different lines passing through this one. One for air, one for water and one for coal. None of these devices will change the pressure, remember one thing. They just are heat exchangers and in ideal assumption, we, in ideal condition we say that the temperature will rise whereas the pressure will remain constant. Pressure drop in all these devices are neglected. All these processes are taking place at constant pressure. So what is the function of super heater? It is just converting the state from dry and saturated to superheated. What is the function of economizer? To raise the temperature of water which is supplied to the boiler by recovering the heat from flue gas. What is the function of air preheater? It is used to raise the temperature of air which is supplied to the boiler. Let us define this point equals to 1. Let us define this point so this is same as 2, let define this point is 3, this is 1, so this one is 1, we have defined already 3, so let make it equals to 4, so 4 is inlet to the water, enthalpy, so what is H4, H4 is simply HF, is it correct, at given condition at given pressure. What is H1? Is it H1 is more than H4? Because it is transferred from flue gas to flue gas to water. So H4, H1 is slightly higher. That depends upon the effectiveness of heat exchanger. And this H1 here is inlet to the boiler. Now two is the exit condition. Now 2 can be equals to either HG or 2 can be either equals to what? HF plus X HFG. HG when it is dry, saturated. X HFG when it is what? Wet. And what is point number 3? Point number 3 is superheated. Is it equal? Actually for superheated, they will provide you pressure and temperature both. If pressure and temperature are provided, it means superheated. So you can collect this data directly from table. If the data is not available in table, you can use formula that is Hg plus Cp soup multiplied by T soup minus T sach. Value of Cp soup you can take 2.1 and value of Hg value of T sach, value of HFG, value of HF, value of HG are to be collected from steam table. 
at given pressure and the value of HF can be taken as CP of water multiplied by temperature. For this you have to use table number 2. To collect this you have to use table number 1. If you are using this formula then use degree Celsius. Take CP of water is 4.186 multiplied by 40 degrees Celsius, you write 40 degrees Celsius. All enthalpies are in kilojoules per kg. It is collected from superit table, that is table number 3. Here diagram, you can use 2 and 3 only, not 1. In case, we have a boiler model. And in this boiler model, 1 is inlet and 2 is outlet. We are supplying a coal from this side. This one is called as hot well. It is called as hot well because is the temperature at inlet to the boiler is the inlet temperature to the boiler is more than normal water because this one is normal water and in economizer is the temperature is raised. That is why it is called as hot well. So this one is a hot well. From this we are pumping the water and the water the steam water is get converted to what steam so this one is one and this one is two coal is supplied from this side mass of m dot f is coal the heat transfer for the steam is m dot s multiplied by final minus initial enthalpy that is h2 minus h1 h2 you can calculate either weight dry saturated or superheated and this value is equals to h1 h1 equals to either hf at room temperature or you can calculate using CP of water. What is CP of water? 4.2 and what is CP of vapor is 2.1. So we define first term called as boiler efficiency is amount of energy received by amount of energy received by the water divided by amount of energy supplied by fuel. So this quantity M dot S multiplied by H1 minus H2 and how much fuel is supplied? M dot F multiplied by what? Calorific value. That is called as the boiler efficiency. Equivalent evaporation is defined as mass flow rate of steam divided by mass flow rate of coal H2 minus H1, H2 minus H1 divided by HFG corresponding to saturation temperature of 100. This value is fixed 2 to 56 point. But you can write this as kg of water or kg of steam kg of coal what is the standard value of this one that is equal to what 10 your value should come very close to 10 then it is a, one term is called as evaporative capacity it is the amount of water and water vapor evaporated into steam per hour it can be expressed as kg per hour or kg per kg of fuel or kg per hour meter square any of this quantity they will ask you that was clearly described in the question actual evaporation is defined as the amount of water evaporated into steam at actual working condition per kg of fuel burn so actual evaporation is defined as m dot s divided by m dot coal this quantity is it called as actual evaporation and the remaining this quantity is uh, actual evaporation and this total quantity is called as factor evaporation. So is equivalent evaporation is the product of actual evaporation multiplied by factor of evaporation. The boiler evaporates 8 kg of water per kg of coal into dry saturated steam at 10 bar. So let we have a boiler here. This time it's a 8 kg of water per kg of coal. So is it M dot S divided by M dot coal 8 into dry saturated steam at 10 bar. So this condition is P2 equal to 10 bar. Dry condition means X2 equals to what? 1. The feed water, this one is called as feed water. Temperature of what? 46. That is called as room temperature degree Celsius. This one is coal. We want to find out equality version from and at 100 
and also calculate the factor of evaporation. H2 you have to calculate as Hg at 10 bar. So go to the steam table and check out that value is 2776.2. 2776.2. Next you want to calculate HF at 46. So come to table number 1. 46 HF is it 192.6? Both units are kilojoule per kg. Right, equivalent evaporation equals to mass of steam divided by mass of coal equal to final minus initial H2 minus H1 divided by HFG at 100 degrees Celsius, 2256. Find out approximate answer. What is the factor of evaporation? Is this term is called as factor of evaporation? Yes. So right, factor of evaporation. <coughs> Substitute for H2 and H1 and divide by 2256. Factor of evaporation. A steam generator evaporates 18060 kg per hour. So you keep as hour only at 12.5 bar and the quality of steam is 0.97. The feed water temperature at 105. When the coal is fired at a rate of 2040, calorific value is given as 2742. You want to calculate heat rate in the boiler in kilojoules per hour, equivalent evaporation and thermal efficiency. This one is feed water at a temperature equal to what? 105. The steam is produced at a pressure of 12.5 bar. When dryness fraction equals to 0.97. This one is inlet point 1. This one is exit point 2. This side we are supplying a coal. The coal is supplied at the rate of 2040. Steam is supplied or water is supplied at the rate of 18060. The calorific value of coal is given to us is 27420 kilojoules per kg. First of all we will find out H1, HF at 105. 1, 105. Is the data available for you? No. Data is not available. So come to table number 2. Approximately 105 is this one. Table number 2. Column number 2 around 1.2 bar. Is it 105? Is the corresponding enthalpy is 439.4? And rough calculation you can do. What is 4.186 multiplied by 105? 2 you can calculate as HF plus X HFG H2 equal to HF plus X HFG because steam is wet. Go to 12.5. Record your HF 806 and record your HFG 1977.4. Okay, first term heat rate in the boiler. So, right, heat rate calculate in kilojoule per hour. So, how much heat we are supplying? Is it a mass of coal? multiplied by calorific value. Mass of coal is 2040 and this one is 2742. Our kg will cancel. Whatever this answer come, will come as kilojoule per hour. Second, you have to want to calculate equivalent operation. Mass of steam divided by mass of coal multiplied by higher value of enthalpy minus lower value of enthalpy divided by HFG at HFG at 100 degrees Celsius 2256.9 Mass of steam is 180 Mass of coal 2040 H2 2726 H1 is 439 2256 This value should come very close to 10 and finally you want to calculate thermal efficiency. So, amount of heat utilized, mass of steam multiplied by H2 
minus h1 divided by the heat supplied by by coal is mass of coal multiplied by calorific value so this value of efficiency is at 70 3.8 percent